Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. So in this video, we're going to look at new features that came out in .NET 6. If you're thinking whether or not to upgrade to .NET 6, you have no choice because .NET 3.1 is going out of life and .NET 5 is also end of life. So you have to update, but here are some cool things you get out of it. Uh, the first thing is, so as you can see, this uh, uh, console application that I created, and no longer you need the main and all this stuff. They're calling it kind of like minimalistic apis or something like that so basically means that like you don't need all the stuff that kind of like you needed before to kind of like get coding you can literally just start first line and start with like hello world you don't need the main args and all that stuff you still can use them if you want to so it's just easier for new people to start without having to type all that stuff new things also that are coming out um that i already have videos on so i'm not going to cover in this video is done at maui uh how to reload it's faster. I'm not going to make a video on it being faster because either way you have to upgrade and Blazor uh, ahead of time a compilation. And so now let's jump into my favorite features. These are not an extensive list of all the features because the video would be too long and people don't watch long videos. So these are kind of like my favorite ones. And the first one is date only and time only. So you usually have date time that has like the time zone and all that stuff. But if you only need the date, like let's say you, you're doing a birthday application that keeps the birthdays you don't really care about the time and like it might mess up in different time zones and stuff so you only want the date or maybe you just want the time for something these are kind of like ones that like allow you to only have the date or time makes it simpler to kind of like play with it and as you can see you can get it from like from date time so if you create a date time and you only want the date or something you can do date from date time and it also allows you to have like different stuff you can get day day number which is a day from january 1st 0001 so like gives you all the days it's pretty useless day of the week day of the year so how what day of the year it is in which month it is and which year it is so it, it allows you to kind of like break it down further and same with time you can break it into hour and so on so now we're gonna make this back in the nullable just to show the next feature which brings us to argument null check. So before, and this is something you should do in every function, whenever you're calling something from a like an, any public function, you have to validate your parameters. And before, you, if you had to check for null for something that can be null, like a nullable, you had to do if equals equals null, then throw argument null exception, which is four lines of code, which is unacceptable. So now they reduce it to one line of code, argument null exception, throw if null, and, and you just put it and it will throw it. So it kind of saves you a few lines of code. I'm all for saving lines of code just because I'm lazy. Now let's move on to the next feature, selecting a default. So the first for default is kind of like one of the functions I use the most to check whether or not something is in a list and like return the, or re just return like the first value when you're trying to like get something and it's usually null but you can change it now with uh, .NET 6 you can change it to have a default value so instead of being null you can make it negative one for this one that is numbers or you can make it if it was strings you can make it like we couldn't find a value or something like that then the next one is min by and max by uh, so in Q we just have a list of random class this could be anything when you're using link which Actually, just a side story. Um, the first uh, pull request I did when I was starting as an engineer at Microsoft, I was coming out of college, had never used C Sharp, and I came up with this crazy way of like iterating through the array the most efficient way and everything. And I was super proud of it. I submit the pull request and the lead engineer in my team just goes, Google link. And that was all, his whole comment. He was like, this is trash, throw it away, Google link. So <laughs> now I'm doing videos about link. Uh, so if you wanted to get the max number out of something, like let you, you have this link, uh, this list of random objects that have a field called number of cows. If you want to get the object that has the most amount of cows, you would have to order by, the, order by descending and number of cows and then get the first one. That's a lot of code. You had to scroll a little. Now you can do it with max by. So you just do the list and you do max by and you set the in the field that you want to compare the elements with and it'll return you the element with the most amount of cows. And you also have min by and stuff like that. Last but not least, you have chunks. So let's say you have a huge list of like thousands and thousands of things and you have to do something and 
makes sense to break it out into smaller chunks to do it in parallel and like use multiple threads on your CPU instead of doing it all at once. Before that, you had to kind of like create a function that will go and like break it down into smaller arrays or smaller lists. Now you don't need to. You literally just say the list chunk and the number of elements you want in each chunk and then we'll go ahead and chunk it up for you. So now we're just gonna run it just to make sure it works. Um, and I have some breakpoints to kind of like show the different things, but yeah, that's basically it. So let's just run it. And then here we can see the found value in here, the default is null and it works. And so this is the old way of doing it. And now the new way we set it up to negative one. So now we, we do if uh, value is negative one, then right, we couldn't find the value. And then for max cow objects, this is getting it the old way with all the extra code. And as you can see, we get the one that has the 54 cows and then we do it with a new way. And we also get the one with the 64 cows. And then we do the min object. And then for chunks, we had like this list of four, which doesn't really show the value, but I was not gonna type a bunch of our uh, objects. And here you can see you have two objects per list. So you have a list one and list two, since we have four objects. So those are my favorite features in .NET 6. What are yours? Uh, please comment them down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.